victory. I went on a hunt for the elusive magic marker. But of course, we don't have erasers. <laughs> we have so many more. You aren't watching this. The students are not paying attention to reading my hand. Oh, you were right. Ah, oh, okay. I'm trying to get it started. Everybody doing okay? Oh, so quietly. Uh, my phone is dead, so my watch is not going to work. So we'll go for two or three this morning. I wanted to give a couple announcements about the field trip and see if you have any questions about the field trip. It's going to be very hard for me to face this class with a Philadelphia Flyer shirt and a New York Yankee shirt. Oh, that's rough. You a Flyer fan? I gotta admit, it's a great team. Great history, great tradition. You know who Dave Schultz was? Good man. Are you from the area? You know Koch's Deli, <coughs> University of Pennsylvania, yeah. best best delicatessen in my opinion in Philadelphia, 37th and Walnut. Right next time I go back. Yeah, right by the uh, right by the my son's attending the University of Penn, Penn uh, in Philadelphia. Okay, uh, tomorrow, uh, for those of you who can come, remember the assignment for the field trip is to attend two services by the 30th, 30, October 1st, one, I think. No, yeah, the 30th, right? So you have to attend two services by the 30th. Mm -hmm. You can attend uh, with the class, uh, the mosque tomorrow, or on the 26th, I've just arranged, uh, hopefully, tentatively, with our guest to go to the Gurudwara on the 26th. 
because we cannot go to the synagogue tomorrow or on the 20, uh, on the 17th because the synagogue has asked us not to come because of the holiday. So we accept that. Uh, so there will be no, uh, I will not be taking any students tomorrow night to the synagogue. However, I will be taking those of you who want to go with me to the masjid. I will leave in front of the library at 1.30, the syllabus says. And uh, you can go either with me or you can carpool or you can go on your own. We're not going to the Islamic Center of Tampa. We're going to the one that's on 56th and 130th. So you just take Fowler if you're going on your own until it hits 56. You go north as if you're going toward Fletcher. But before you get to Fletcher, before you get to the famous University Bowling Alley, I'm sure some of you, you all look like some of your bowlers, I'm just guessing. Yeah, I just kind of had that bowling persona. I can feel the vibe. <laughs> before you get to the bowling alley, on the right-hand side, you'll see a road called Graham, which is opposite, opposite an art show store. It's the next street after Graham. It's 130th. When you get to that a street, 130th, you'll see a sign that says Dead End. Uh, there's no sign there at that corner for the mosque. You just go down 130th till it dead ends. That's the mosque. Okay? And uh, tomorrow, because the iftar has ended uh, as of uh, tonight, uh, there, it'll be a different kind of event all day Friday. Normally, you, the Jummah prayer is a mandatory prayer. A lot of people will be there. It's a voluntary prayer, and, but there is a mandatory celebration in the morning starting at 10.30 or 11. So because of that, there'll be actually quite a few, not too many people there at the mosque at 1.30. And the other thing that'll be a little bit different tomorrow is that uh, there is a carnival and a festival, pony rides for little kids and all kinds of things going on. That's not the normal event at a mosque. You don't normally go to a mosque and have pony rides as part of the religious experience. It's not part of the religious tradition of Islam to have pony rides on worship day. That's just tomorrow is a carnival, okay, for, for the kids to celebrate the end of the Eid. And I do barak to all of you who are ending your fasting. So just to review, tomorrow at 1.30, meet in front of the library if you want to go with me, either to pile into my Volkswagen Rutan. I can take all of you in that, you know, easily. Some on the roof rack maybe. Or uh, you can follow me, we can carpool, or you can just meet me over there at 130th tomorrow. Uh, like I said, I'll be there about 1.40. If you're going on your own, it would be ideal if you could get there about 1.15. If you get there early, just sit in the back if you're not a Muslim. They'll have uh, uh, places divided for men and women. Uh, women uh, should cover up. I like the bell bottom. That's the good look there. The coming back on huh? bell bottoms, 70s. I used to wear those in the 70s. Uh, but something long, long uh, dress or long... Uh, pants and I preferably long sleeve shirt but you know that's not as important as just covering up kind of being as modest as possible and they may or may not ask you to wear a covering if they ask you to wear a covering they'll usually give you one they usually won't kick you out for not having one they usually provide some scarves for you to put on your head as an act of respect you'll have to take your shoes off um, and then the assignment itself is due on the 30th you can attend a mosque, a synagogue, if you're, not, uh, uh, if you're not from the majority religion in this particular culture, you can attend a service from that religion. Uh, but if you're raised in the majority culture, I'd ask you not to attend uh, a Christian service. I'd rather you attend a Hindu, Muslim, Jain, Sikh, Buddhist, uh, or Muslim service. But if you're a Muslim, uh, and you don't want to attend a, a mosque service, obviously that's fine. Go to a Christian service or an, another place you haven't attended. The whole point of this assignment is to benefit you, not to benefit me. So the place where you will get the most benefit uh, for you personally is the one that, would, that I'll encourage you to go to. What do you write? The syllabus says uh, three to five pages and another place it says two to four. So, or three to six and two to five or something. It's two to six. So, it, it, there we go. Just compromise. The first citing on the syllabus is, I think, three to five pages. But as the syllabus went on, it just, I had to change it. I was forced by the gods to do that. So. No, I don't have an explanation for why. 
So because of that, you can have it just two pages long. I don't know how you can do that in two pages, but anyway. Two pages minimum, uh, under two pages it will hurt your grade. Over six pages, I'll probably not read it. No, I'll read it. I, I will or I'll read it, study it, and, and weep over it or laugh as the case may be. Uh, what do I want you to do in the reflection? I want you to write your personal response. I don't want you to tell me what happened uh, at the service, what the imam said, because I was there, or you know, I know what happened. Describe your feeling. I felt really welcome. I felt didn't feel welcome. I felt you know, warm. I was really nervous. I wasn't nervous. I was amazed at how simple it was or how complicated. Whatever you think about the place. Now, there is one thing I have to say. I would ask you not to take notes in the services themselves. Now, it's pretty much okay to take notes when you're visiting the Hindu temple. Walk around for 30 minutes, they don't usually have services, so it's okay to walk around with a notebook there. In a Jewish synagogue, in a Muslim mosque, masjid, you usually do not take notes. Uh, you can um, take notes at a, at a Hindu temple. Uh, is it okay when they're at the Gurudwara, they can take, okay. they can write notes, or a Christian church, you can write notes. But other than that, in a synagogue and a masjid, you shouldn't be taking notes, because that's not the point, you know, um, for the for those communities. Any specific questions, specifically about the field trips? Yes. Um, I won't be able to go because yes. I'm wondering, like, when's the before hour? September 30th? Oh, I know, but like time, like literally times during the day that I should go okay. and uh, Other students weekend. will have the exact same question. That's a good question. Uh, you work it out. With, there's At the Hindu community, you can go anytime in the morning or in the evening after 6 o'clock because the, the, the Hindu temple is going to be closed from 12 to 6 every day. Uh, the Baha'i community will have services midweek. Uh, the, uh, Hindu, uh, the Muslim community will have uh, prayer services. So you can go other than a Friday, one o'clock, or you can go other than a Saturday, like synagogue will have Saturday morning services. Most faith communities have more than one service a week. So you, I provided phone numbers. The phone number I provided in the syllabus for the, the masjid is for the Islamic Center of Tampa, which is the major one, the huge one, not the one we're going to. So don't be confused. Tomorrow I'm taking those of you who want to go to a different masjid than the one that's in the syllabus. The one in the syllabus is the well-known, the big one. Any other questions about tomorrow or the field trip generally and the assignment generally? Yes, Jonathan. John? Yeah. The, not uh, Jonathan. Uh, no, well, not right now. It's not really. John. Okay. John. Uh, <laughs> so the, the assignment is to write one Two to six. No. Pages. Yes. One, two to six pages. Response to the two field trips yes. combined. Yes. So the one paper will be yes. two. Yes. In one. Yes. So you could write one page of you one could. and one of the other. You could. Or three, or whatever you want. You got it. Okay. Good. <laughs> or or you can points. do five of one and one of another, or four point. Yeah. Okay. You got it. <laughs> Anyone else want to do a mathematical question on that? percentage ratio? I think you just asked me all these questions to mess me up. No, it says <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. two six-page field trip responses. Two <laughs> to six pages. All right. So let me tell you about tonight, what's going to happen tonight. We have, uh, we're very, very fortunate to have two extraordinary presentations back to back. So we will have our first presentation on Sikhism uh, until 7.30. And then at 7.30, we'll take a five or ten minute break, five minute break. And then uh, we'll start the presentation on the Baha'i faith. So the Baha'i faith, uh, unfortunately, because our guest tonight uh, did not have a vehicle, uh, either A, I will have to drive them and dismiss myself, and you'll have the Baha'i presentation on your own, which means it'll go on until 2 in the morning. Or one of you can volunteer to take the, our guest back, and I'll stay here. But I'm planning to take, the, take you all back unless one of the students, one of you wants to volunteer, and, and we trust you. You look trustworthy. No Philadelphia Flyer or New York Yankee <laughs> fans need apply. Yeah. Is it no dogs and Irishmen. They used to have signs up in stores, need apply, right? Sorry, you're just okay. Just giving you all a hard time, you know. Oh, Lord. Um, 
I want to start with a passage, uh, a, a reading uh, of scripture, um, and it is uh, a very short one. It's a hymn from the, uh, by Guru Arjan, and uh, it uh, is a is a prayer to God about God's power. There is none beside you, O God. There is none beside God in whose power are lords and emperors and whose power is the whole world. God has created everything. Address your supplications to the true guru that he may arrange all your affairs. God's court is the most exalted of all. His name is the support of all the saints. The Lord whose glory shines in every heart is contained in everything and fills all creation. By remembering him, the abode of sorrow is demolished. I read that passage because I love that line. By God, the abode of sorrow is demolished. Sometimes things happen in our lives that are very painful. And some of us have had things deeply hurtful that have actually created like an abode of sorrow in our lives. But that abode of sorrow is going to be demolished. Um, by remembering God, Death will never molest us. By remembering God, what is withered will become green. By remembering God, the sinking stone will float. Interesting. Victory be ever to the society of the saints. The Khalsa shall rule. God's name supports the lives of his servants, says Nanak. Nanak. Hear, O God, my supplication, by the favor of the saints, grant me to dwell in your name. We're very fortunate to have Dr. Singh with us today. Dr. Singh is a scholar. He's written a number of books. He's traveled the world. He's lectured previous at the University of South Florida, lectured across the universities in India on the topic that we have asked him to, to share with us tonight, which is an introduction to the Sikh tradition and uh, do you prefer questions at the end, or do you prefer them to raise their hand and ask whatever, questions? Whatever they like. So if you want to stop Dr. Singh, if you have a question, something you don't understand, he, he's fine with that. And uh, we're very grateful for your coming. The fifth largest religion in the world, Sikhism, and often one that is little understood. So thank you. I will have to start from scratch. Sick. I don't even know if those work. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. We'll try. S I K S. Sick. The word sick means a student, a learner. A disciple. So, literally, you are all sick. You are all sick, you are all learners, you are all disciples. And wherever there is a learner, there is a disciple, there is going to be a master teacher. Teacher. In our religion, The teacher is called Guru. Guru. So Sikhism 
is that religion which is based on the relationship of a disciple and a teacher, a Sikh and a Guru. Mr. Chris is your Guru and you are all Sikhs, okay? And the, the word Sikh comes from the Sanskrit word Shishya. Sikh is Punjabi, our language. Punjabi is the language of the state where the Sikhism originated. So Shish becomes Sikh in Punjabi. And Guru is, as it is in Sanskrit, as such we have retained in Punjabi as well. So the religion which is based on the relationship of Sikh, a disciple and a teacher, a Sikh, a Shish and a Guru. So this religion started in the year 1469 with the birth of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, our first Guru, our first holy teacher who founded this religion, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Guru Nanak Dev Ji. He was born in 1469 and he passed away in the year 1539. He lived this, uh, in this human frame for about 70 years. So after Guru Nanak, we had nine more teachers, nine more gurus. And our last guru, 10th guru, his name was Guru Gobind Singh. Guru Gobind Singh. He passed away in 1708. So far, 239 years, starting in 1469 and 1708, 200. 39 years we had 10 gurus. The first guru transferred guruship to the next guru and then so on. The transfer of guruship from one guru to the other was based on talent, spiritual knowledge and the capacity to serve the people human beings. It was always done on merit. So we had 10 Gurus. After our 10th Guru, Guru Gobind Singh Ji passed away in the year 1708. He gave Guruship to the Holy Book. After 1708, there is no Sikh Guru in this human frame. The book is the Guru. The holy book is the Guru. That is why we call that book, our holy book, as Christians have Bible, Muslims have Quran. Our book, holy book is Granth Sahib. Granth is a book. Granth is a Sanskrit word which means book, holy book. Sahib is a word of reverence. Sahib we call Sahib to a master, to a lord. Granth Sahib and we prefix the word Guru. Guru Granth Sahib. From 1708, Guru Granth Sahib is our Guru. And it will be the Guru of a Sikh forever. Eternal Guru onward for all the times to come. Guru Granth Sahib. And we always believe that Guru Granth Sahib is the spiritual embodiment of all the ten Gurus. Whatever our Gurus preached, lived, disseminated, that is contained in that book. And we are to follow all those teachings, all his words, 
So that is why sometimes we call word is our guru. Shabad. Word is Shabad in Punjabi. Our guru is word. So whatever the teachings, whatever the uh, ideas uh, given by them uh, jointly, they are our guru. 1708 and thereafter. One thing more I would like to tell you that sometimes it is said a Sikh is a Khalsa. The word Khalsa is of Arabic origin. And from Arabic it went to Persian and from Persian it came to our language. Khalsa. Khalsa means pure. In the year 1699, our 10th Guru started a new ceremony of baptism which is called Amrit. Amrit is nectar. A, a, the water prepared by the Guru in a specific way was administered to the six. And he gave the name Khalsa to the baptized six. They became Khalsa. The six came to be known as Khalsa in the year 1699. And Guru Gobind Singh was uh, uh, the person, the Guru, who gave this title to the six, Khalsa. So Sikh and Khalsa is the six. A baptized Sikh is always Khalsa. Okay? And uh, one thing you must know, every Sikh has his last name Singh. S-I-N-G. -S I am Singh. He is Singh. All the Sikhs are Singh. Last name. Singh means a lion. And every Sikh woman is Kaur. K-A-U-R. Last name Kaur. My wife, Kuljit Kaur. Kuljit, first name. Kaur is last name. Every Sikh woman is Kaur. Queen, right? Kaur means princess. Ah, princess. Princess. So these are the titles given by the Guru. Words. So it is very easy to say Dr. Singh. It means the Sikh. Uh, uh, those who know uh, a little bit about Sikh is all. They recognize just by the word Singh. Once I went to the Tampa railway station and the person who was uh, giving uh, tickets, I, I told him that I am Singh. Now, you are a doctor? I said, no, I am not a doctor. I am a doctor of literature. But, and he said, the, generally the Sikhs are doctors here. We have uh, so many doctors in America. So many engineers, software engineers, professionals. And they are also doctors. So Dr. Singh. So it is... Your son is a doctor. Uh, he is a doctor of medicine. Generally, the doc, doc, uh, Dr. Singhs are medicine, doctors of medicine. So I am a Nakui doctor, a fifth doctor. Can I tell you a story about that? Yeah. Someone called my house and they said, is Dr. Van Gorder there? My daughter said, well, he is a doctor, but he's not one that does anybody any good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> there are so many jokes about doctors. Anyway. That's what happened. <laughs> anyway. So Sikhism started with Guru Nanak. Guru Nanak was born in the year 1469 in the state of Punjab, which is the northern state of India. We are from India. And you know there are so many religions which originated in India. The first of all is Hinduism. The Vedas, the ancient books, the oldest books were written in India. Veda, Hindu books. And then Buddhism, then Jainism, and then so many other uh, denominations. And there in India, in the state of Punjab, 
Sikhism started with the birth of Guru Nanak, our first one. Now, what was the critical scenario, social scenario at that time? Hinduism was the religion of India. And in the 10th century, the Muslims also started coming to India. They came to preach Islam. And naturally, they were converting Muslims, uh, Hindus to the is, uh, Islamic religion. So there was a conflict, a great conflict between Hindus and the Muslims. They were fighting. They were demeaning one another. So there was a great turmoil, troublesome situation in India at that time. And there was a total vacuum of leadership. Who should lead the people so that they, they learn to live together, to coexist, to love each other? So that role was assigned to Guru Nanak. Guru Nanak came to the world to give a message of harmony, brotherhood, love, and peace. He is known as the messenger of peace. Guru Nanak traveled for 28 years on foot. When every corner of India, went to China, then to Tibet, crossed the Himalayan ranges, then to, then to uh, Saudi Arabia, then to Iraq, then to uh, so many other uh, countries, and, and he went up to Mediterranean. He walked on foot, covered about 45,000 miles in 28 years. 